Oh, hello. So, as an autistic, one of my niches is Doctor Who. Um, but another one of my niches is archive media and restoration and all that goodness. So, watching the Star Beast, um, I have all my thoughts and stuff on the actual story and the making of it and everything about that. Um, I think it's the best Doctor Who's ever looked. Like the colour grading, um, it's everything's much more in focus than it was in the Chris Chibnall era. But that's not what this video is about. This video is going to be about the archive media within the Star Beast. Now this is just the flashbacks. So there's a lot of flashbacks in this episode that go back to series four. So um, you have the Doctor and Donna. So the opening has a lot of flashbacks. And I was very interested watching it. How weird this looks. The whole rest of the episode is in 4K HDR, but these clips look so bad quality. For some reason, and we're gonna go into this, it looks like it's been interlaced. So I might have to explain what that is. Um, is a whole world of interlation. Interlation is that a word? But let's get um, let's get into it. Scrolling through the whole episode. Like, it looks amazing. Like, the quality is pretty good. Um, now, let's go back to the opening. <laughs> we have these clips, these archival clips from Series 4. And I'm just so interested in why they look so bad. I hope you can see this. Like, I, I'll zoom in and editing. Like, that's David Tennant. You can see all his wrinkles on his face. I'm not judging, I'm just, like, as a some form of the... Ah, oh, it's in 4K, look at all the wrinkles in David Tennant's face. And now we go back 10 years. Has it been 10 years? I don't know. But can you see the... So there's a thing um, called Jagged, or Jaggies, um, which is just basically how diagonal lines kind of staircase down instead of just being a nice straight line. And that's due to a lack of vertical resolution. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to explain intellation. Very basically, intellation is a kind of cheat to be able to display enough um, temporal resolution uh, with in sync with the electricity. So in the UK, it's 50 hertz. So you want to be able to display 50 consecutive images. Um, but you can't, technology wasn't that quick. So you had the laser, like, um, it was like a CRT kind of laser shooting. So it would do every other line or field. And one fiftieth of a second later, um, and then it will go up and do all the odd fields. And this is what Doctor Who has been displayed as for the entirety of television, because television is still interlaced. Um, even HD television is interlaced, but it's progressive now. They just display both even and odd fields as the same um, as the, the progressive. So in reality, it looks 25 frames per second, but it's actually 50 on British television. And an interesting fact about this is iPlayer, always displays things as 720, 50 frames per second, and they do a Bob deinterlation, frames per second interlaced. You want to be able to display that properly on, um, on iPlayer. There's also things like credits where they will scroll up and they'll be interlaced. Um, so all these kind of things. So if you look on iPlayer now, uh, and you watch, there's all the classic stuff right now. They're all 50 frames per second, apart from some black and white. And like, it depends on how, <laughs> there's all these complicated things. That explains some things, but the thing that's quite interesting to me is why does this look deinterlaced? This is 25 frames per second. This is not the usual 720 iPlayer recording. This is the 4K 25 frames per second recording. So I'm very interested in why uh, you can see how all these ver vertical lines 
it's like it's lacking that vertical resolution. It's like we're only seeing one field. And you can really see on the necklace how it's kind of looking like... It's like a staircase going down. It's kind of like a barber um, spiral kind of effect where it's like it's constantly going down. And it's so compressed and everything. So I'm wondering where they got this from. That's the main thought. Did they just rip this from my player? Is my thought. Um, because we can go and have a look at the Blu-ray. So let's compare this. This is from the Star Beast. And this is the Blu-ray. So instantly we can see... First thing that jumps out to me is how much better it looks on the Blu-ray. But the second thing is they've cropped it, haven't they? To, um, because since uh, 2018, Doctor Who has been 2 by 1 aspect ratio. Whereas before it was 16 by 9 And before that it was kind of slightly um, less wide than 16 by 9 But only because of how SD content it was displayed. There was kind of a blanking area at the sides. So that's why on the Blu-rays, you kind of have these, it's kind of pillar boxed, just a little bit on the sides. And now let's have a look at the Star Beast again. And we can see, so they've stretched, they've stretched it out. They've stretched the sides out. And they've cropped the top and bottom. Now, of course they're going to do that. There's a very easy way, you just do that, it's very easy. And I'm pretty sure they crop a lot more. Um, I think, because they're filming an anamorphic, I'm pretty sure they're cropping the sides off, um, because it would be super wide, but they're cropping that off just to get to two by one. But then there's also some bits where they're not filming anamorphic, and they'll crop the top and bottoms, just to make it all fit in within the aspect ratio. But the other interesting thing is, during Jodie's era, it would be, um, broadcast in different countries in 16 by 9 so they'd crop it down again, they crop the sides again to fit 16 by 9 for their broadcasting standards. But now it's on Disney Plus, I'm pretty sure it's in the same 2 by 1 aspect ratio everywhere on Disney Plus, which is nice, I think. It's good to keep with what they want. Still kind of want to see all of Jodie's episodes in proper wide uh, cinematic aspect ratio. Um, but to be honest, I'd love to see it all in 4K. I'd love them to release 4K Blu-rays. I would snap that up. Even though I wasn't, like, the massive fan of Jodie Whittaker's Doctor Who episodes, I just, I'm too much of a fan to be like, uh, 4K, like, it was shot in 4K. Like, and, and even when it wasn't, like, the colours would look so much better, I think. There was a lot of muddiness in the... Sorry, I'm going on a tangent. <laughs> um, back to this. So, clearly, they have done some colour grading to make it look darker. There's all the highlights that are blown out that they've turned down a bit for this, for this shot. And I can notice here they've added green. It looks like... Either they've added grain, or they've done some kind of sharpening thing. They've definitely tried to de-halo it, I think. So, what do you do? <laughs> I've decided to take it upon myself to uh, bring the resolution back to Dot 2. So I've taken this shot, and I've done some colour grading. So now we have it like this. I've done what they call halation and like kind of film emulation and I think that would suit it a, mo a lot more. It's kind of more of a dream like memory quality to it and also it removes that kind of haloing that we were talking about. You want to kind of blur it slightly, blur the edges slightly just to try and fit with the current footage a bit more but we don't want to sacrifice some quality too much. But the main thing I was thinking about was, I'm still going to have to crop the top and bottom, aren't I? But why don't we widen it? So, this shot here, it's a pretty straightforward shot. The sides are both black. It doesn't matter that this is going to be in the library. 
this was clearly not shot in the the, the library set um and it doesn't matter for this shot right now in this episode that it was in the library so i think it doesn't matter that we add some black to the sides i think that i could use photoshop's ai fill to extend the tardis a bit more and move the tardis doors out a little bit um which would change how the box looks but it doesn't matter because i can scale it up a little bit and just fudge like it's all about fudging it just to make it look nicer and so that's why i did i've i've done that right here <laughs> here's what i've done earlier so there we go i've also used topaz video enhance um but with topaz so here's my philosophy on using ai upscaling when you get an output you we have to you have to dehalo it in the software um, but when you get the output, it's too sharp. You have to blur it slightly. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but you, you don't want it looking too sharp and digital. That's the thing I see so many people online doing with video enhance and other AI sharpening tools is cause it's trying to work how the, the pixels and try and hallucinate detail where there is no detail you get all these artifacts and over sharpening and things so my philosophy is anything you do like that you want to blur it slightly just a tiny bit with this it doesn't matter so much because i'm blurring it with the halation and everything and the kind of glow and making it look nicer the other thing i've done is i've kind of done a chromatic operation to the sides which is quite nice. I've done all of this kind of color grading in uh, DaVinci Resolve. I was quite interested in how the TARDIS doors were kind of purple, so I made them a bit more blue. I guess they kind of look a bit more green there, but I just wanted it to look more TARDIS dory. Dory? Um, I think maybe there's too much stuff going on in this coat, but I'm quite happy with how it looks. And then we go on to the next shot. Which is so much easier than the last one. Because we have this shot. And this shot has this, this area here. And the next shot is the exact same angle but just zoomed in. It's like a different lens. From the same angle. So I could just take the bit from the last shot and paste it onto the sides to widen it out so no ai filling needed there uh, that's how i used to do everything but you just can't get some shots ai filling is pretty nice tool to have in the toolkit but even with the ai fill that i did here it was kind of hallucinating detail but it was kind of dodgy details there and it was doing something weird over here so i had to refill it and just kind of the way i always use ai is i use it and then i over correct it i try and fix all the errors and stuff um recently i've been trying to upscale an old really old youtube video and with that i've been trying to interpolate it to a high frame rate and that is very difficult with interpolation software and stuff so a lot of that has been just going frame by frame trying to warp it and correct artifacts and things which is very interesting to me you see so many videos online where they have this kind of oh i've ai upscaled it and they've just pressed a button and that's how they think it works and that's how loads of people think ai upscaling is and that's all it can be but it's so much more and you just have to work harder and you just have to you get this output and it's like well this looks shit so i'm gonna have to go in and add detail like even here <laughs> going back to this i was saying i took this and took it over to this shot but i also took a bit of this shot like this bit and that bit there because there's loads of detail in this bit and I took that back over here and I just scaled that down, put that there. I rotoscoped David Tennant a little bit just to make him 
front again, so then the console's in the background. Just a little bit more detail there, which I don't know if you can tell. Oh, no, I think you can tell. There's like a lack of detail there that I've reintroduced that you wouldn't have got with AI upscaling alone. I do think it does look a little bit weird. I think their faces are a bit weird. Um, if we compare that with the original. I mean, their faces kind of look a bit weird. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, the detail in the face is a bit weird. I guess it's trying to, it's over accentuating their skin, which is kind of a bit weird. But yeah, I'm quite happy with, with how this looks. And if we go and compare it with the um, original again. Oh dear. <laughs> like, look how much. This is. This is the only clip I've done. But before this gets released on Blu ray. If anyone knows someone at the BBC, can they can they um can they reach out to me and commission me to uh I mean there's loads more shots like this uh flip TARDIS shot. Don't think I didn't notice it flips. And it kind of works in the Ragnos where they've just kind of added more noise and it kinda of works. These shots I don't think no, there, there is, there is still a, like, you can see right, you can see right there, there's a lack of resolution. I don't know, I don't get it. I don't get it, BBC, you have it on, you've just released it on Blu-ray. Why didn't you do that? There's all these nice shots. But yeah, there's like a weird colour to them all as well. But this one is the most egregious example of the, the thing that I'm saying is intellation and de -intillation. You can see how it's kind of flickering a bit. You can see how the windows are like flickering. So now I've zoomed in, you can see how much more grain there is. And I think they've added that for this 4K. But you can see how it's kind of flickering up and down. Like, why have they done that? Ah, oh, in this previous shot, you can see the stare, the jagged lines I was saying about. So comparing this shot, we can see, like, why does it look so much better from the Blu-ray than the, the most recent episode? Um, like, the colours look better as well. You have so much more detail in the stars and stuff over here. There's kind of an interlacing artifact in this anyway. But then you kind of had that with CG elements back then. You can see a Moire effect. You can see a Moire effect in the this area here. You can see how it's kind of patterning. Unless they purposely made it look bad, so then the new one looks so good in comparison. But I don't think. I think they just grabbed what they could, what was on the server, maybe. But that's this video. Um, I just thought I'd want to, I just wanted to talk about that and I want to know your reactions. Um, if they show more flashback clips as well, I know they're probably going to be showing the toy maker in color from looking at the end of the Daleks in color. Um, and that looks great. So I, I'm assuming any other clip will look great. But for some reason, just the the more recent stuff isn't looking good. Future Harry here. Just wanted to say bad quality audio that um, I really enjoy these uh, shots. So clearly they've uh, cropped it from 4x3 down to the 2x1. Um, but that was expected. Although in one place, it looks like they have extended it slightly and they've composited to shots together and uh, just the color and everything it looks so good they did such a wonderful job on it um my only criticism is that it's not longer like i want to see the whole scene lovely color and uh i suppose it would bring the pacing right down though but i don't care <laughs> put it on the blu-ray but do a director's cut with it <laughs> very kind of ironic i'd say that 
Something from a missing episode, like a missing serial, would look better than something from 10 years ago. Um, that's this video. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I have a Patreon if you would like to support me on there. Um, otherwise, keep watching and keep enjoying and keep uh, being interested in media and archiving and preservation and things like that. And Doctor Who. <laughs> Because Doctor Who is amazing. <laughs> um, yes. Goodbye. Yeah. I wonder what the Daleks are doing here.